I wanted to have a very close-knit sample set uh, because this was the first time a study like this was being done and I didn't want to have too many markers that went outside of the norm for me. So I went with women. Also women are more likely to have MS versus men. But there's a, a larger plan here. <laughs> uh, my, the next study after the larger study that is with women, I want to, to do it with men. And there's a reason why, because I want to compare. I want to do a comparative analysis between women and men. And I also want to do one with individuals who are veterans who have MS. Uh, as you know, there's a large veteran population who has multiple sclerosis. It's the largest neurological disease that they face. But I want to look at whether or not uncertainty and change in individuals with MS who are veterans versus individuals with MS who are not veterans, if there's a difference there. Because in the military, there's already so much change. There's so much uncertainty. I wonder whether or not that's adjusted their coping styles and how that impacts their quality of life. It hopefully will change the way that they approach them. The idea is if we can identify that an individual is having problems with these symptoms and we can provide them with medication, tools, resources, support, then we have a better chance of helping them self-manage. Because if we can give them back some of that security that they need to better self-manage and to identify other resources that can help them with their coping, with the uncertainty, with trying to improve their quality of life indicators and their markers, we can help them have a better quality of life. And that's really important in individuals with the best, not just for them, but also for their families. Coping. That was the other variable that I pulled in. I took a look at coping indicators, adaptive and maladaptive coping. We all have coping skills, and we all have adaptive and maladaptive coping but our ability to utilize them differs between individuals. And so I pulled in coping to take a look at how that helps some of individuals with MS in terms of quality of life. And for individuals who had greater maladaptive coping, we found that it was a detriment to quality of life. But for individuals who had uh, adaptive coping, we found that it was helpful. we'll have to do it, an additional study uh, to, to see just how helpful it is. I want to do a larger group and I want to um, extend it to the 48 states instead of the Southwest because I only did it in the Southwest. The reason I did it is because there's, I wanted to have a closer group in terms of cri meeting my criteria. But now I want to extend it out to the United States as a whole, excluding Alaska and Hawaii, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Um, to see whether or not we can ask a few more questions about uh, early childhood lifestyle and learning styles and pull that in to see if that also plays a role in the coping and if that can help or hinder quality of life. So, so really it comes down to coping styles as well.